right here, right now. It's LA South. I'm Pamela Kay, and today's show is all about the Grammys. And who won the Grammys? Well, the only one we care about is the band Kubion. And who is that? That is Wayne Toop, Steve Riley, Wilson Savoy, and Joel Savoy of Valcor Records. And you may have loved these guys before, but after today, they will forever be in your hearts. The band Kubion, right after this. Uh, this is the first time traditional Cajun music has ever won a Grammy. Lois Soleil won a Grammy a while back, but uh, it wasn't traditional Cajun music, it was more like Cajun rock and roll. So it's quite a big statement that a traditional Cajun band with no drums, no arrangements, nothing special, just sitting down and playing like kitchen music has won a Grammy. You know, I mean, all three of us have worked on CDs for, you know, collectively a hundred years, I guess, and uh, almost. And, uh, well, maybe not that many, but collectively for like 55 years. And uh, we have, you know, all kinds of arrangements and really thought out CDs and complicated this and that, and none of us have ever won a Grammy. And then we sit down and record, like, you know, kitchen music, and we win a Grammy. It's pretty amazing. And I think it says a lot, you know, for local little guys starting out playing Cajun music that, yeah, you can just do it old-fashioned, and you'll get a lot of respect for that, you know. Yeah, I think, um, and the fact that we did it with Wayne too, so he's obviously the good luck charm. One, <laughs> one for one, one nomination, one win. Thank you, Wayne. And I, I mean, I'm just so thankful. It makes me think of all the great Cajun musicians who we learned from and we idolized who came before us. I mean, I'm just so thankful for them for laying the groundwork, um, laying out the path, you know, and making things um, easy for us, you know. Um, my biggest hero, Dewey Balfa, Dennis McGee, there's so many of them, you know, so many greats that we learned from, and just thanks to them, and yeah, we made that CD just hanging out in this room. It was the uh, easiest record I've probably ever done, the loosest, and uh, like Wilson said, you never know. This was a kitchen at one point. It was, <laughs> it was an outdoor kitchen, yeah, they used it, my dad used to house uh, parties out here. Well, you know, I think it's very significant to the culture because, um, you know, Cajun music been around a long time, and you know, through the years, uh, it's went from generation to generation, and there've been so many style changes from, from what Amadou Adjouan did to Ira Lejeune, to uh, Lawrence Walker, Alice Roger, Belton Richard. Uh, I, I just think that, and you know, being that it's not just a Cajun and Zodico category anymore, to where it's more regional roots music, the competition is a little bit more stiffer. And I think doing what we did was a, a very big compliment to what you know, we were raised with and uh, to the musicians that are around that look forward to maybe getting in the studio with Valcor Records and uh, maybe trying their luck at it. One of the things that makes this really special is that you have three of the biggest representatives of Louisiana music at the same time winning a Grammy. Finally, I think it's just amazing representation of what's happening in Louisiana today. We have different generations and people from all types of different musical backgrounds that came together and instead of competing against each other, they took the Grammy home together. Well, uh, I've been nominated with my group four times before and I, I, I went two years to the Grammys and wasted a lot of money, <laughs> a lot of time, a lot of stress, got some white hairs probably over it. And uh, sitting in the audience, and I, did, I thought we had a decent chance with my band, Pine Leaf Boys, but uh, every year they always had like a heavy hitter that I was pretty sure they were going to win, you know, when I went. And, uh, and then they got the stress of sitting there, and they're like opening up the envelope, and you kind of think that maybe you have a chance. And with Kubion, uh this year, we didn't, I didn't go, and he didn't go, because we had gigs. It was Mardi Gras weekend. What a horrible weekend to have uh, the Grammys. And we, I know, they should have rescheduled it. But, and uh, we, I had three gigs that weekend. He was booked all over the place, too. And actually, the day they announced the winner, he and I were playing a split show together at Pat's in front of, like, you know, whatever, a thousand people that were there, which was great, because when, when my phone began lighting up, boom, 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 I was playing accordion, and I, ha I had a feeling it was good news. People started saying, congrats, congrats. And I was in the middle of the tune, and then I knew at that point. And then Thomas, my bass player, had an iPhone, of Wayne, a video of Wayne getting up, running up the thing and giving a speech. And I was like holding it for the whole audience so they could see, you know, that. And everyone was like clapping. And I said, I couldn't think of a better place to be than right here at home with all the local peers and fans of ours, you know. 
uh, just cheering us on and all that. But uh, I thought we had a pretty good chance this year because uh, it's a pretty awesome project. Even if I wasn't part of it, you know, if I wasn't part of this and they had somebody else playing fiddle, I still would have thought, you know, with these two guys that we had a very good chance. So are you ever going to play accordion again? Because <laughs> you won this playing the fiddle. <clears throat> and um, anyway, yeah, I've, uh, first time I was nominated was in 1995 with the Playboys. And um, this was my sixth nomination. And you uh, always have a one in five chance. So you never know. And I've been three times. And last year I went, the Playboys were nominated last year for our latest album, Grand Isle. And I went, I thought we had a good chance. I really did, probably the best chance ever. And I had my whole family with me and it didn't happen. And it's heartbreaking, it really is. And then everybody wants to go to all the after parties after. I mean, it's hard to get up after you've been knocked down. And um, I needed a break this year. I was glad Mardi Gras was happening. I needed a break from the emotional roller coaster of the Grammys. It's heavy, it's as big as it gets for us, you know? It's the top award. And I gotta say, Joel was texting me. We were texting back and forth. I was trying to text you. My hands were shaking sitting there. <laughs> and it got down, you know, we were 49th. So they had to go through several categories before they got to us. And he said, one more to go, getting excited. And the next message was one. And I was immediately, I was moved to tears. I had my little boy with me and I grabbed him and hugged him. And I was sobbing, you know, I was just moved immediately. And, um, you know, he didn't know what was going on. I said, Daddy just won a big award. And he was like, how big? <laughs> the the, I said, yeah, I told him, the biggest. And um, it's great. There's no better feeling to be awarded that way, um, you know, to be voted that award uh, by your peers, by the Academy. And um, I'm really thankful, you know, I mean, super grateful and thankful to have done it with these guys. These guys are my cousins, by the way. <laughs> we grew up together. And uh, Wayne Toops is um, a hero to all of us who came after him. And uh, it's just a huge honor. It's Steve and Wilson and them, uh, they've been very fortunate to have those nominations underneath their belt. Uh, I haven't been so fortunate. This was my first time. And uh, I can only say that uh, I wasn't going to miss it for nothing in the world. Thank the good Lord that. He gave me the opportunity to be able to go. Um, you know, we, we, we come back off of a cruise and I didn't even know where we dominated and my phone blew up and I looked at my wife and I said, damn, we're nominated for a Grammy. And, uh, you know, I looked on the books and, you know, chance favors the prepared mind. We didn't have anything booked except for the Monday for Mardi Gras. So uh, we booked our flights and I said, I'll probably never get another chance again. So, uh, I'm going to go. I felt like I'd already won even before I went over there. So uh, uh, sitting in the audience, uh, <laughs> sorry, it's just a wonderful feeling. <laughs> you know? uh, like I said, it might never happen again. I, I just feel fortunate that I was you know, involved in a wonderful project that who was able to bring a Grammy home. And uh, I still ain't broke down yet, but I think I will sooner or later. <laughs> but I uh, thank y'all. <laughs> See that footage of Wayne walking down, down that aisle. I mean, it hit my heart. I was on the way to the gig to meet Wilson. <laughs> I was on the way to meet Wilson. I was like, how is Wilson Savoy playing music right now with all this going on? <laughs> there was a video of me right after the announcer's like to push you off. No, yeah. And Wayne's speech, I wouldn't add or take away anything from it. Perfect. Wow. If I can get through it without crying. I'll be all right. Uh, I want to thank God, uh, my wife, uh, my son, uh, everybody.
Friday, Valcourt Records, Mr. Joel Savoy, Steve Riley, and Wilson Savoy. Thank the Academy. We sure appreciate it. Make our message to one of you guys. I was going to say that filling out the, uh, the form, you have to submit the record whenever you make a record. If you want to be a contender, you have to submit the record and it goes through a whole screening process and things like that. And uh, when I was filling it out with these three guys, I mean, these are, I call them Cajun superstars for sure. To fill it out, I felt really confident. I was like, wow, I think, you know, we have a really good chance of getting the Grammy this year. And uh, I'm on the board of governors for the Recording Academy and a lot of my friends there said, hey, we think you have a really good chance too. And so I was feeling really confident. It was an amazing experience getting to go. Being with Wayne, I had been before. That was the seventh uh, Grammy-nominated record I had been part of. But getting to be there this time with Wayne, who was just so, I mean, you were like a little kid. Just <laughs> we, did, we did everything we could have done. You know, we went to all the parties and walking down the, the red carpet, following him, watching him get interviewed and taking pictures with everybody. And we got there and we were so excited. I was sitting behind Wayne and his family. And uh, one of the announcers was one of the people we were competing against in the same category. And when we saw her on stage, all of our hearts dropped, I think. We were just like, oh my God, she's announcing, so she must be the one that's going to win. Like we thought they had planned that. Well, she was announcing this our category? No, she was announcing other oh, yeah. categories yeah. earlier in the evening. And you know, what made it more interesting is that lady that was the announcer before her won. Right. She won the award that she was announcing. Uh, so you can imagine how we felt whenever we saw her on stage and we were sure she was going to get it. But when, like they said, whenever they announced it and he couldn't say it, we all knew when he couldn't pronounce it, we knew. And Wayne and I just sat there like I couldn't move because we were like getting so nervous about what was about to happen. And Wayne and I just sat there when they said it. And Daryl shot up. He was like, Dad, we won. And Wayne just like flew up and just started running. It was an amazing, I mean, it was very emotional. I mean, it was horror, you right now, Everybody was crying. It was just, it was ex an extremely emotional experience. Everybody was crying. Wayne said, I'm going to cry myself to sleep. Oh, no, man. I'll tell you, I did it in nine flat. <laughs> and I thought, I said the same thing. I, don't, I didn't want to go up. I, I definitely felt like it was your place to go up and and give the speech, and I think what you said was just perfect. I, I couldn't have added anything to that. I was wondering if you two had anything that you would have said if you went up. I'm just glad he thanked me. <laughs> <laughs> and Wilson. Yeah, and no, you. I mean, even if I had been there, I would not have gone up, no way. I mean, <laughs> and I mean, not, it is kind of nerve-wracking, but because nobody could have given a speech like what he done. I mean, mine would have been sarcastic. His would have been, Oh. <laughs> so I don't think we could have done it right. And I put a comment on Facebook a while before he went. I said I couldn't think of anyone better to represent Cubion than, of course, hero Wayne Toots. Well, I'm so glad I was able to make it through without crying. <laughs> you know, it was uh, it was amazing. I looked down the audience and they all people were right there and they're going and. Hell, I just like, hey man, thank the good Lord. <laughs> I hope I don't cry in front of you guys, you know. <laughs> I made it up here. And you know, we were talking, you know, they, they whisk you off after you, you know, we are there back there and I talked with the uh, Flanagan guy and, uh, you know, Dr. John and we did all the interviews. And when we left the Staples Center, we were going to meet you at Wolfgang Puck's, whatever it's called. And Bob Merlis asked, and I never heard. I was so focused on trying to get to you because I wanted to celebrate with you and get a glass of wine or whatever. Uh, she said, Bob Merlis asked me, come on, let's go back and walk on the red carpet again. I never heard it. I never heard it. Otherwise, I wouldn't walk the red carpet again. But I never heard it. I wanted to get to you guys. <laughs>
Sergeant Travis Uval with the Louisiana Department of Wildlife and Fisheries Enforcement Division. I'm going to let you know today there's two ways to get in touch with us if you see a wildlife violation occurring. The first is you can download the Citizen Observer app and you basically tap on it, text us what's going on, and an agent will respond. Or you can call Operation Game Thief, 1-800-442-2511. Remember on both of those, all callers are anonymous and there is a cash reward possible at the end. G'day, I'm Brett Mutt, and I'm LA South. A little bit about me, I'm in animals. They don't have to have fur, they can have fins, they can have scales, they can have teeth, they can be smooth, they can be slick, they can be slimy. As long as they got a heartbeat, I love them. Come see us, www.zoo-zoom.com. Check out Joelle with the Honky Tonk Merry-Go-Round at Artmosphere on Thursday at 9.